Hey, what up, players? It is Warboss Tay up in his mug. Welcome to a little update video showing off what I've been working on for the Lord of the Rings commission that I've been uh, plowing away at. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who's chipped in, um, supported, shared, and helped me get to where I am in my Patreon campaign. I'm at $58 a month. It is an amazing amazing accomplishment for me and for the studio and I really really want to thank everybody who's donated and everybody who's helped me to get here. My commitment for reaching this point is uh, the I guess reward tier, the goal, the milestone goal is that I'm going to be making two dedicated videos a week to uh, some of the Patreon exclusive stuff that is for free for now, but I'm gonna start making exclusive again in February. And that is the weekly White Dwarf review with the War Boss. And basically I'm gonna be taking the newest White Dwarf of the week and taking a look at it from an artist's and a, a hobbyist painter's perspective. And the morning motivational mumblings with Mortarian, which I've just had so much fun making the last one. You can check it out now. It is still for free. It's going to be for free till the end of the month. And after that, I'm going to make it exclusive to my um, supporters on Patreon. But those are just Patreon exclusive ones. I'm not going to put them here on YouTube. I, I want to give people a little bit of incentive and motivation for uh, helping to support my studio over there. I'm still going to be producing all my tutorials, update videos like this one, and uh, everything else, project videos. The things that you know my channel for are still going to be up on YouTube for free. Those are just for my uh, exclusive, uh, the exclusive Patreon private feed. So I'll put the link and all the information down below. You can check it out and help support my studio if you're so inclined. Again, just want to say thank you. Now let's get into these Lord of the Rings miniatures. This is an Aragorn model. Unfortunately, the sword was a little bent when it came to me, so you don't have to write that in the comments. I know it's bent. I tried bending it and adjusting it. The metal is very, very thin, and I was able to get it. Believe me, when I first got it in the mail with this project, it was even more curved, and uh, there were even more kinks in it. So I was able to straighten it out as much as possible, hopefully with some tricky highlighting techniques. It's not too obvious. And this is these models are going to be painted to a war boss standard. So as long as uh, the model overall really, really shines and, and looks good, I think the uh, bent curvy sword is something that will hopefully be overlooked when the model is on the table or in the display cabinet. Now, I'm going to do a quick and dirty rundown of the colors that I used, and um, that way I don't have to do a whole tutorial, but you can still, if you think, oh, that green is really awesome, what did he use, you will still get all of the information right now. So his boots and his jacket and his hair are base coat Rhinox Hide, shaded with known oil, highlighted back up with Steel Legion Drab. His, I think that also includes the straps and his his arm guards there. Yep, it does. The jacket is a Caliban green base coat shaded also with known oil and brought back up with Castellan green and then a little bit of Death World Forest. The skin was Rackarth flesh shaded with Raikland flesh shade twice. Two applications will make it even redder and less uh, pale than if you were to only use one coat, but you want to make sure that you let the first shade dry completely. And then highlight it back up with Rackarth Flesh, adding a little bit of Kislev Flesh for a, a little bit of yellow and pink tone to it. His um, little goatee there was painted the same way as his hair, and the sword was just Lead Belcher shaded with known oil, highlighted back up only on one side with Runefang Steel to catch the light. There's two blades or two sides to the blade, and when you highlight only one side using diagonal slashes, the effect is going to look really nice, like the light glinting and catching off of the blade. His pants are done with Abaddon Black and highlighted with Storm Vermin Fur. All right, so there's him. Let's take a look at Gimli the Dwarf. He was a lot of fun to paint. I actually, this one I just finished. The uh, leather on his on his his coat and his pants and his boot, um, gloves were done with Doombo Brown, shaded with Agrax Earthshade, highlighted back up with Doombo Brown. His beard was done with Dryad Bark, highlighted up with Mornfang Brown and also shaded with known oil. His, the metal was done exactly the same as Aragorn's. The skin was done exactly the same as Aragorn, but using Bugman's Glow as the final um, highlight shade or highlight color. The cloak, now this is a tricky one. You want to actually start with Storm Vermin Fur and, 
or I'm sorry, not Storm of Remembrance, for Skaven Blight Dinge, shade it down with known oil, bring it back up, and then use Dawnstone as the highlight color. So it's a little bit, it's like one tone brighter than black, but it's not really too bright of a gray. It's a very interesting color to work with. The final piece that I want to show off tonight and give you a quick and dirty rundown on is our legless here. He was a lot of fun to paint. His jacket and his green, I guess, uh, coat was done with Castellan Green, shaded with Known Oil, brought back up with Death World Forest. The leather on him is done the same as Aragorn with Rhinox Hide, shaded with Known Oil, brought back up with um, Steel Legion Drab. The skin on his face was done the same, and I really think the when, when you add in Raiklin Flesh Shade and um, highlight it back up using a little bit of Kislev Flesh, but with Rakarth Flesh as well, leaving some of that shading underneath the, the, the cheekbones to really accent the very uh, elfish features, you're going to get a great finish. I mean, just look at this guy's face. It looks just like really, really well done in the light. The hair, okay, blonde hair is a little tricky with this new color range, but this is how I did mine. Zandri Dust, shaded with Seraphim Sepia, highlighted back up with Zandri Dust and then Carrick Stone, and then doing a very thin glaze of Seraphim Sepia just to tie all the colors together at the end. Now, this is just a war boss job. If this were a war master job, I would add a little bit more of a whitish tone to it, maybe some deck tan from Vallejo, and uh, just keep bringing up the highlights. You can go as, as big as you want with, with blonde, and really as, as long as you keep applying some seraphim sepia to the, to the hair to uh, emphasize the, the shadow and the shades, then um, you'll be okay. So the pants were done, the same as Aragorn's dark trousers. The bow was Zandri Dust, shaded with Seraphim Sepia, brought back up with Zandri Dust. And I think that's it. The quiver is done the same as the leather. Nice dark brown, brought back up with Steel Legion Drab. And that is him. So these three guys I'm going to be putting on the side until I'm done with the rest of my Fellowship of the Ring models. And then I'm going to be adding some... Uh, basing materials, some flocking and metal flowers. Some of you might remember the Frodo and um, Samwise models that I did a while back and the ring rates models. I'm going to be doing the same thing with these guys, just adding a little bit of foliage and metal flowers to brighten up the base. Hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think. The Lord of the Rings models, a lot more fun to paint than I was afraid they would be. I've got the rest of the Fellowship as well as Eowyn, Eomer, uh, and Bilbo the old Bilbo model to go, but I'm really, really glad that I got started with these guys. Kind of iconic of the Fellowship of the Ring. I've also got Boromir. Boromir is going to be fun to paint because I'm a huge Sean Bean fan, and I just hope you guys liked it. I hope this uh, video brought some enjoyment to you, and I hope that if even if you don't collect them, if you wanted to replicate the colors, my quick and dirty tutorial just now was uh, a little bit of a help for that. We'll be doing full, full length full feature tutorials, the kind that I've uh, not been able to put up in a while. We'll be getting back to those soon. I've got some other, uh, just some lighting issues to work out with my studio. But uh, if you've been wondering where the full length tutorials are, they are, they are going to be coming back. I've been devoting a lot of my time to catching up on commission work and um, I'm just really, really excited for the new year, just churning out work and models and hopefully motivating and inspiring you guys to do the same. Thanks for watching, everybody. You can check out all of the links to my other social media sites, my Patreon, and the Google group if you haven't seen that down below. If you are a new viewer to my channel, uh, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit the like button. Leave me a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.